Hello guys, welcome back to my little shed or the haunted house as someone called it in the comments. Uh, yeah, it's rugged but it's what I've got and that's what we use, right? So today I'm going to change the drive kit on the Tenere, which is the drive sprocket, the front little one, the chain and the rear big sprocket. So first of all, how do you know when it's time to, uh, to change it? it Depends, of course, how you've been riding and where, if you've been going through deserts or whatever. Uh, someone just asked me, oh, you've been riding 20,000 kilometers, have you changed the, the sprockets and everything yet? And I hadn't, so I looked into it and I could, of course, ride more, but um, the signs that I decided to go on uh, to change uh, the kit is that the front sprocket that's the drive one that on, on the gearbox that actually drives the chain. That one shows the most wear. And I'll show you in a minute when I get the small sprocket out. It's easy to see that. Uh, but but the, the actual cogs are starting to look a little bit like shark fins. And the chain looks okay. The rear sprocket looks okay. But if one of them is in need of change, you should change the whole kit. Uh, that's the recommendation I've been uh, given because it's it, it's to be considered as a one piece and if you have worn sprockets and, and change only the chain it will wear faster and so on so so because they are uh, sort of tuned and, and worn into each other um, so so change all three parts of that at the same time if you have the possibility to do that I'm getting new parts. I'm getting the drive sprocket, the chain and the rear sprocket and what do I choose? How do I find the correct parts? Well, I took the easy route. I went to uh, off the road, but for me to be sure I went into Tenere 700 section and there was a complete drive kit to be bought. There are a few options. It consists of the little uh, drive uh, sprocket and the big rear sprocket and these some some riders of the bike they opt to change the number of teeth on these sprockets it's 15 teeth uh, on the little one and 46 uh, on the rear one when you buy uh, the bike that's the standard I have had no problems uh, or desires to change the the RPMs at different speeds and things like that. So I opt to go for 15 and 46 also. Uh, some want it to be, uh, have lower RPM at high speeds, so they make some changes there, or they want to lower um, the, the gear ratio uh, so that you have a bit more higher RPM instead uh, for real off-roading and technical slow stuff and yeah. So, but these are the original ones, also the chain. So this was in one kit and all three parts. And the options you have when you, you, when you order that kit is how many teeth of the sprockets do you want? 15, 46, I had to select that. That's also in the description so you know uh, what the standard is. And for the chain you have the option to buy a closed chain or an open chain. I have opted for the open chain which is you have to connect the two ends yourself. There's also a lot of things when it comes to chains. Uh, you have 525. Uh, the normal ones are 520, 525 or 530. And if you find those that is nothing but how how sturdy or rugged it is. So the 520 is lighter uh, so, so you and, and also cheaper and it can, can withstand the, the least amount of, of pressure still enough for I mean I mean DID is a quality chain so even the 520 is a good one. 521 is in the middle and uh, 530 would be the heaviest most rugged chain that uh, can take most uh, yeah stretch and yeah violence to it. Okay, so what we're going to do first is to um, 
remove the cover for the front sprocket. We're going to take care of the front sprocket first completely. And then I'm going to do the chain completely and then I'm going to do the rear sprocket. So working glasses on. Let's pick up first we need some I think it's five mil hex. Yeah got some gloves on also. Third one away. And this little hose you can just pull out and you can manage to get this out there. Okay, so here's the little fella that we're going to take out. Uh, you can, if you want, uh, disconnect uh, the gear pushing rod here if you want. Um, I'm going to try to leave that in just for convenience. Um, and also you have this part here that we can take away actually. And it looks like it has been taking some beating. Wow, this looks really beaten up actually. Ah, it's not beaten up, it's just full of goo. Uh, I will take this out and I will clean it a little bit. This is uh, the protection uh, to protect the engine if the uh, chain would snap on the, on the top side. Uh, it will go with force into the uh, engine here and uh, yeah, make a mess in here and damage stuff. So this is a rubber protection thing. Okay, so the objective now is to loosen this bolt. Uh, it's a 30 mm uh, socket that we need for that. And I have my wrench here. Um, and I have put the gearbox in, um, in neutral. So it can spin freely here now because when we start tightening or loosening uh, this bolt we don't want it to rest on the compression of the engine. So we're actually going to use other means of, of keeping this uh, the torque on, on this bolt. Now if one looks closely at this bolt it's not that very visible but you can see there's a ring on the outside of the axle here um, and there are some flat parts of this axle and, and a little hole here so what they do is they they push this ring ring in or hammer it down so it so it sort of locks the bigger bolt from com coming out so you need to make sure that this bolt uh, this outer ring is not pinching too hard on on there so you can knock it up a little bit so <clears throat> for this to it's a bit sunken in there so I'm actually going to use an extender here my 30 mil socket but as you can see now this uh, spins freely so I need the chain on the sprocket as it is now uh, because if I break the chain I can hold uh, this sprocket still while uh, losing in it. So I'm actually going to come from this side and stand on the brake with my foot and then I can loosen it, lefty loosey like this. So now the bolt comes off. So now I can just as well uh, loosen the rear because I want to take this sprocket off and at the same time I want to push the uh, rear wheel forward a bit so I can loosen it from the chain and, and everything. So let's do that. Let's get it out from this side, it's like that. Okay, so now I have enough slack here. I can loosen this part. Okay, so off with the bolt. So this part consists of 
one bolt like this. And one washer. And then it's the sprocket itself. This one is what they call a uh, dampened or there's some rubber parts on it. It's a little bit heavy. But I'll show you the difference between this one and the new one. So I have here the old one and you can see uh, that it has almost like small shark fins. And compare that to the new one which has symmetrical and much more wider uh, cogs and that's what the old one looked like. So now I'm actually going to install the front sprocket again and I keep the chain on. I do all the rest later because I want the chain to, to be on here and so I can um, yeah break uh, with the chain to, to fasten it again. Great, there, okay, so now it's in, like so, and I want to put the washer on there again, and then on with the bolt, like this. I think there are some smarter ways to do this because now I want to put the uh, axle back in just temporarily into the rear wheel again so that I can uh, apply some braking power to this chain. So it's just I don't have to pull the bolt on or anything. Uh, torque wrench and I want this on 95. 95 newton meters and as we see we need to apply the brake and get to 95 yeah and just feeling it again as you can see there's a little open space there and we want to hammer this edge a little bit down so that it so, sort of locks this nut, nut back onto. It's like a mechanical Loctite. So, okie doke, new sprocket in place. Okay, so now that the front sprocket, the drive sprocket is, is new, we want to change the chain and the rear sprocket. And I want to change the chain first <clears throat> because um, these are riveted in place. There are no quick links here. We have to use some sort of tool to uh, because they are sort of mushroomed out. So there's no way I can just hammer these out, these um, um, pins that are go through here. So I need to use, um, if I were traveling, uh, I would have in my kit a little metal file or something like that. But since we are at home, I can use the power tool, yeah? Uh, so we're actually going to take from um, one of these uh, pins, the rivets, I will take off the head and then push out the pin. And I want to do that before I change the sprocket because I can be less careful if I accidentally go in and make some marks here and so on. We're going to uh, change that part anyway. As you may see now, the, this one is completely flat, so we could uh, push that out. So I have here a little uh, chain tool that I bought. It's not the smallest one, it's quite bulky, but it does all the tricks because 
we're going to push this pin out that we can do here um, then with the new chain we have some pressing and and making new mushrooms on, on the chain on the rivets here the principle here is just that you want the pin to push through and this tool does that yeah so now it's getting there come on out like so I have the pin in here let's see what we have here in this glittering little packet wrapped in like a real nice antroco so here we have the chain like that and we have the locking rivet and this is not a clip-on but we have to go uh, pressing these things together so take out the new chain we can just make a little fun thing here that we can connect this to that one there are several ways to do this also but we can use a little strip a little uh, just plastic connector here put that back on and then we pull this on too so it goes all the way around on the front side let's see if we can follow it so okay dog here it comes like so a nice and then we can cut this little strap strip there like that disconnect and here we have the old chain uh, if you want you can um, save a nice little piece of this and keep it in your uh, traveling toolkit or something like that if you should have a chain break or something you can use that and some spare connectors with a clip version and and be able to, to fix your chain even if it breaks. I'm going to fit, uh, fit this uh, chain onto the old sprocket, doesn't matter really. But what I'm going to do is first I'm going to screw these um, chain tension screws in a bit. Because the new chain will be shorter. The, long, uh, <laughs> the old one uh, through wear and tear it's been... Uh, elongated and you had to uh, adjust the chain again and you you wear it and you have to adjust adjust it again because it becomes longer and longer so this is a new one it will be shorter so we need to get these screws uh, in here first and we'll do some tensioning later on so just screw them in a bit and that you know that it will be too far in just so they you get them out of the way okay now they won't interfere so what we want to do is you can push the tire in a bit here and we want to stretch it and we want it these two parts to meet nicely like that don't be shy come over here now what we're going to do in this packet here that we got with the chain here we are we have this um, rivet or this main uh, main key I hope you can see it this main link and we have four small um, rubber washers if that's what they called but they are going on here and then we're going to push this thing over it as you can recognize from the other uh, rivets uh, in the chain 
And we can see it's all made in Belgium because they have uh, mayonnaise in to everything, even even chain links. Open the little packet of grease here and apply it here on on the master link and make it really messy. It needs to be a lot of lubrication because. Uh, this is the weak spot or it when it comes to lubrication it is and then you take uh, these rubber Sealings Yeah, I found the word for it ceilings um, Put them in the goo One on each apply a little bit more of this of the mayo Like that Good, good. See, really messy it needs to be because when you're pushing this in, they are going to be sealed in place with all this nice grease in, in the ceilings. So, okay, so let's push it through from the other side. Like that. Okay, so what we want now, more grease on that. Yeah, that we want. Uh, rubber ceilings. And then the end plate. Uh, this plate on. And now this needs to be pushed on. Um, pressed on. And we make sure that, I'm not sure it doesn't matter which way, but there's this there's some text DID there and not any text on the other side. So I'm going to make sure that the text is outwards. I'm going to press it in as good as I can, but I will not be able to push this in the, uh, as much as, it's, as it needs um, by myself. So I'm going to need to my press tool. Yeah. So this is going to just uh, press these uh, together. Okay, so now I'm, I'm looking from the rear to see that I have the, the locking thing here on as far in on the chain as the other links. So it, you can see that quite well when it's because you don't want to over press it or anything because you you don't want a stiff piece of chain there and for the next part we uh, transform this little tool to a riveting tool so that it it's now going to press on it has a little pin here ah i live next to a church and it rings <laughs> yeah so finished yeah i think you heard yeah uh, we're going to mushroom these pins so they swell out and sort of lock into place So I'm pushing this in and I'm doing this with One pin at a time and I need to make sure that it and You can feel it. it it really sticks well to to the to the chain so once we are here we can just apply some pressure Give me any tips or, or the viewers so they can read through and see, see uh, your tips in the comments down below uh, on what you do to, to make this uh, easier in the shed like now or uh, even the, on the trail. You don't perhaps do all this on the trail but on a around the world journey or whatever if you want to fix these things yourself. So I'm happy now. I'm happy with the result of the, the, the chain and now we're just going to take the rear wheel off again. It's sort of half off already. Come on, like that. And Now we're going to take the rear 
uh, sprocket off and put the new one on. So let's just take these off. They were quite tight. There are nuts. And there are washers on here. Nuts, you go here. Washers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have this little ornament that we can keep, make clean later. And here we have the sprocket. Now let's see how this looks and if there's any special direction. You see it's completely flat on this side, like on that side. And on this side it has some uh, yeah, depth to it. So flat side down, closest to the, to the tire. Some goo there. Okie doke, on with a new sprocket, like so. Everything on in the same order. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. 14 millimeter sockets to uh, work with these bolts. Uh, the torque for these guys are 80, 80 for these um, bolts. Rear sprocket on, that was the easiest part of course, just loosen the bolts, take it out, replace and screw them back on. Uh, the chain is new, the drive sprocket is new, we only have to mount the rear wheel again. Put the chain on, leave this here a little bit, we're going to tension it but not all the way in because uh, first we're going to set the chain tension. New chain on the new sprocket. So let's get this rubber thingy guard back in. It just slides in pretty well. Put the rubber hose thingy in again, like so. And just find the holes again. So did I do anything completely wrong? Please tell me before I drive too far with this thing. Okay, so I tighten it just a little bit here but not by much. Take it down on the side stand. So chains like 43 to 48 millimeters, six and a half centimeters, so 65. So that's far, far, far too much. 4.5. Then we're done. Now let's give it back the 105. Newton meters that it craves. So, what do you think of that? Completely new drive sprocket, rear sprocket, and chain. So, thank you for watching, and you can save a few bucks doing this by yourself. It wasn't that hard. Um, there are so many ways to do things, so if you have any special tips for me and those who's watching this and they're going to attempt this on their own, uh, write your best tips there. Um, for the workshop and on the road if a chain breaks or whatever you have to do in the middle of the desert and change sprockets and stuff like that, I'm sure there are some cool tips for that. But for now, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.